survival type shovel thing. Um, so it comes with this like really chintzy Cordura cover that catches, um, which is tat. So you got a saw and spanners and the usual sharp edge for cutting stuff. So, but it's actually quite a decent little shovel. You've got a little, you know, toilet shovel basically. And then it also comes with this bit, which has got a whistle and a ferro rod, and then supposed to be a glass breaker, like you're gonna carry this in your pocket. Um, I've also put a load of um, string inside this. So I've got a load of um, and steel string there, and that's got a really terrible knife and saw. And a screwdriver and Phillips. So you can put that in there and screw things and then you can screw your knife in there. Goes in there. So quite a nice little compactable shovel. Um, it seems very strong. I've not used it in anger because of um, lockdown. Um, so if I can get this to pack nicer, jettison this, right, and then make some kind of leather pouch for it. And here's what I'm thinking. So I always make um, like a leather template um, for some cardboard and just see if it works before I start cutting into everything um, and wasting time. So you can see it's rattling. So I can have a couple of poppers on there. That folds open. I'm gonna make this flat bigger because there's something I really want to do to this, which I'll explain later. Um, and then have this bit fold out, and then we'll have three tubes here. One for that, one for that. The shovel goes in a pocket at the back there. And then the third tube will be in there. Been doing me, me calc so I can work out how long all this all needs to be. So I've decided it's going to be 650 by 185. That will give me room for stitching. And then the inner bit that's going to take the tubes that goes across is going to be 155 by 360. I've gone for that scraggy end because there is a reason. Okay, so I have got this logo. There we go. So, very cool looking. Now, I found this on Google Image Shirt. I found it on Pinterest. I cannot find who drew it originally. So, the original drawing was this. And I've traced it and just simplified it a little bit. Took some of the shading out. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because I've got one of these. So I'm going to have a go at tattooing leather. Now I've had a little practice with a few bits and I found, um, just messing about practicing with it, um, that when the needle splatters as it comes in and out, it, it, it puts spatter everywhere and the spatter, <sighs> focus you pig, yeah, so, so you end up getting spatter over everything and you can't get rid of it. Um, so I've come up with a cunning plan there. So you can see it started a blot. So it goes into the leather and soaks in, um, which isn't helpful. Get to the point. <sighs> PVA. So I had some success yesterday. Um, I can't get it. Hang on. <laughs> okay, so you're focusing on that at all? Right, so I had some success yesterday. Now I painted this in PVA um, and then washed it off 
after I tattooed. So if we can see these, yeah, we haven't got any blotting. Um, the only thing is, I didn't leave it long enough before I scrubbed the PVA off. So I'll put it into some warm water and then use soap and water to break it down. But where I scrubbed it with like a nail brush, it's washed out a lot of the dye. So this looks a lot more faded than any of these. But it still looks good. Um, and, and, I've, and I've sorted out that blotting, which I'm really happy about. So I'm going to have a go at something ridiculously complicated that is way above my skill level because I've been tattooing for ooh, about four days. I'm happy with that. And then that goes into the distress leather. So this is, yeah. There we go. Yeah, so that's giving it an indented look. So I'm going to go around that again with light biro, and then I can tattoo over that again. This is um, just a lining needle, so it's, four, it's a 12 gauge needle, five little needles in a bunch there. So we'll hold it in the ink and it draws the ink up into the little reservoir, so then you can carry on driving. As soon as the magnets come on, it breaks the contact, turns the magnet off, comes back, makes the contact, turns the magnet on. Yeah, so all that does is go and down like that. Um, so um, this setup was about, 30 quid um, so it comes with a foot pedal so let's power up the ink now this is like dodgy Chinese ink really don't use it on humans because it probably contains radioactive material or something now always be careful opening these because keep them tissue ready now, first of all, give it a good shake, otherwise your consistency is going to be mullered. Always shake it because it settles, apparently. Right, that's that. And then we'll take the tip off. Now, sometimes these are under pressure. So they... Oh, it's all right. And we'll fill our reservoir right up.
Right, so we can see, obviously all the lines have got a lot thinner and a lot more gentle, um, but the PVA worked brilliantly. I think a little bit of the ink as I was scrubbing the PVA off. So as soon as I put it in the water, this whole area didn't absorb any water at all. So it gave a waterproof layer. So if, like from here up, got wet straight away. So yeah, that's the original color. Um, but there was a lot of ink washed out of it. Um, but I'm happy, there's a few little discrepancies and missed lines, there's a couple on the teeth, around the eyes need a little bit, but on a whole, I'm really pleased with that. Now once that's dried, um, now I'm going to slowly dry it. If you dry this too quick, um, you're going to make the level really, really hard, and also washing it in soap is going to take all the oils out of the leather so I also need to um, repolish it and condition it and get some oils back into the leather This is um, alcohol, so that should evaporate off and leave behind the dye. Um, actually, there's only a little bit in there, so if I keep this one separate, I just put that in there. So ruin the cover top. So I decided last night that this dye had come out too dark and it was covering up all this root system bit at the bottom of the drawing. Um, so what I did was washed it down with alcohol to get some to try and lighten this dye. Okay, so I've stitched this bit and then I'm going to stitch that to there 
So that's our first, that's our first tube once this one's stitched. Then I'm going to punch the holes and do the third tube, but that's going to be stitched all together with the outer cover. So that will make a pocket behind for the main blade and then we'll have the three tubes, if that makes sense. So I'm going to crack on and do that. There's no point filming stitching because it's boring. Okay, so that's stitched down both sides and this is going to want to arch around. So I'm going to glue these two and then we'll be able to stitch it to the main thing. Um, so I'll glue this in place and then I'm going to wet it um, so once it's formed. That's better. Right. I'll bring you back. Okay, so <laughs> bit of a complicated one to clamp down, um, but I've put some doweling in between just to push it down and I've put the bits of the shovel in there. Um, so hopefully, once that's dried, I'll keep tweaking it a bit so it all looks square. Um, hopefully when that's dried, that should stay flat. Right, so that's pretty much dried out. So we've got the three tubes there and then that can sit behind there like that and then like that and then that will pop her over the top there like nice okay, move it around but um happy with it so far so that's gonna sit on there we're going to stitch through both, through there, both through there. Um, this comes with a cover, so that's handy, so I won't have to make a cover. And then that'll sit just there. Right, so <clears throat> this is just a pack to keep everything together. So there's no point having a belt loop on it because I'm never going to put it on a belt. It's just going to go in the bottom of my bag so I can just go, there's my shovel, it's in the bottom of my bag. Or in the boot of my car if it snows. Um, so I just want to keep it as a pack. I don't want to put a belt loop on it. I don't want to put any extra straps on it. Just keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so I'm going to stitch this side first. Then wherever that lines up to, then I'm going to stitch that side and then I can cut off any remnants that, that overhangs this edge because we've got a little bit of an overhang because I left it generous. Okay so before I sew this on I want to do the inside of this part um, and I'm going to go for black because it's going to cover up, obviously the shovel is going to get muddy so the black should cover and obviously having a skull on it it's going to be like dark and moody on the inside. Okay, that's that stitched. Just got that last through there to do. Trim this edge back um, and then burnish the edge edges um, and then it's just down to the final fixings. Um, I've, where I've stitched it, um, I've put a little blob of glue in the corners there just to hold the end of the thread. I have to put a little clip on that while I'm getting Measured up and sorted. Okay, so I've got some of these. So they there's a screw and they screw together. So you get 
a thickness of leather. So you've got a little screw there and then a blank. So I've put them in here and I can fold that up and screw that to there. But first of all, I need to affix a popper there and there somewhere that this is going to work with.